event, such as processing or editing, the copies will reflect those changes. This is a big time saver. Click OK and the repeat will be directly placed after the base event. Muting an event stops you from hearing just that event. You may want to mute events in a track so that the track continues to play except for the events you mute. Note that this is different from muting a track. Choose the Mute tool. Click once on the event you wish to mute. To unmute an event, click on the muted event with the Mute tool and it returns to normal. If you drag with the Mute tool, you can mute a number of events at a time. Equally, this will unmute events that are muted. You can add a fade to an event to give the effect that the event is fading in or fading out. Choose the Object Selection tool. Click on the event you wish to add a fade to. Notice the blue triangles that appear at the top left and top right of the event. Click on one of the blue triangles and move it so that a fade appears. For more advanced fades, you can double-click on the Fade area to open up the Fade dialog. See Fades and Crossfades in the Operation Manual for more information. You can add volume automation to an event. This allows you to adjust the loudness of the event over time. Choose the Draw tool. Click on the Electric Guitar 1 event with the mouse, and notice that a volume automation point appears. Clicking either high or low on the event will change the event's volume to either loud or soft. Clicking further will create more points. As you create more and more volume automation points, you are adjusting the volume of the event over time. Notice that the audio file reflects the changes you make. The sample editor is primarily used for detailed editing. It can be used for the following functions. Detailed sample drawing, hit point editing, warp samples, time warp, or region editing. The sample editor is explained in its own chapter in the operation manual. Before we go into the sample editor, let's explain events and parts. Audio events are considered raw pieces of audio that sit on the project page. Audio parts are a collection of events grouped together. This is what an audio event looks like. Notice the blue triangles at the top. This is what an audio event inside a part looks like. Parts contain either audio or MIDI. Notice that there are no blue triangles at the top. To open the sample editor, double-click an audio event. You know you are in the sample editor by looking at the top left-hand side of the window. If you double-click on an audio part, you will open the audio part editor. You will need to double-click on the audio event once more to reach the sample editor. Cubase has the ability to make changes to the audio in more ways than splitting and resizing. You can normalize, reverse, pitch shift, and time stretch to name a few. For a full explanation on processing audio, see the chapter in the operation manual called audio processing and functions. You can process the whole audio event or use the range selection tool and just select the section of audio you want. Let's show you how to normalize and reverse an audio event. Normalize raises the volume of the audio to the desired amount. A common use for normalizing is to raise the level of the audio that was recorded at too low an input level. Go to the process menu found under the audio menu and select normalize. Adjust the slider to the amount you desire. A setting of 0 dB or minus 1 dB is common. Press the Process button and your audio is now normalized. If you have copied events on your project page, this dialog will open. It asks if you want all the copied events changed or if a new version is going to be created so that only your selection is affected. Reverse. With the Object Selection tool, click on the audio event you wish to change. In our case, let's pick the base audio event. Go to the Process menu, found under the Audio menu, and select Reverse. Offline Process History When you process audio, the audio is not permanently changed. Instead, Cubase remembers the changes and stores backups of your files. You can then come back to the processing, make changes, swap the processing with other effects, or remove all the processing entirely. This is done behind the scenes and can be accessed through the Offline Process History window. We have processed the base audio event with Normalize and Reverse. Click on the base event to select it and choose Offline Process History from the Edit menu. The Offline Process History window shows you the processing that has been applied to this audio event. You can click Modify to change the settings of Normalize if, for example, you normalize too high or you want to bring it down a little. You can also replace Normalize with another process by selecting Replace By and then choose another process from the drop-down list.
Remove is used to remove or delete a process from the list. If, for example, we didn't want the reverse anymore, we can just take it away. Deactivate toggles between deactivate and activate. If a process is deactivated, the activate button will appear, allowing you to return the process to its original state.